So guys, if you saw my other video where I was talking about um, the three lists that I made about your aptitudes, specialized knowledge, and listing your philosophies and how that, for me, how it, it, it uh, gave me so much clarity and excitement about how I can show up to the world with my gifts, um, there was a part that I wanted to actually expand on that uh, about philosophies. And this is something that I learned, uh, I don't even remember where I learned it. I learned it years ago, uh, this statement, but this is, this is so true and so fundamental to like us feeling happy and successful in life. And it goes like this, our philosophies, or you could call it your reality, your worldview, your perspective, your philosophies determines your um, attitudes. Your attitudes affect your behavior and your behaviors dictate your outcomes. So if you're not happy with your outcome in life, like there's certain areas that I realize I want to make changes that I, I'm not really living up to my potential. What I, the process is to look backwards. So if I'm not happy with the outcomes, what are my what are my behaviors? Um, you know, am I not showing up and doing the things that require to get the outcomes? That's not deep enough, though, because we can often know we don't have our behaviors right, but we don't know what to do about it. We don't know how to get that motivation. That's when we look deeper. Why is that motivation not there? That's that's our attitudes. Our attitudes tend to either be negative or, or positive. They're, not, they're seldom neutral. Um, we either have a good attitude uh, and we feel lit up and excited or we don't. Um, and then that's still not deep enough because we can be there and be aware of that, but then not, then feel like, well, I still don't know what to do about it. So it just makes you even have a worse attitude. You feel frustrated and it keeps feeding back. We have to go deeper and we have to get all the way down to the, the core, which is our philosophies, how we view the world. Um, you know, an example of just like one, I'll give you an example of one negative philosophy that I grew up with. And it's, and it's kind of that whole idea of that money doesn't grow on trees or like you got to sweat and, and money's hard to get. Money is scarce and it's rare and you got to hold on to it when you got it. You got to be frugal. You got to be careful. Uh, all these kind of like negative, these, these philosophies, if, if you believe that money is scarce, then your attitude towards money is going to be one of fear. Whenever you have it, you're afraid of losing it. When you don't have it, you're afraid of not getting it. Um, then that's going to move up into your your behaviors. You're going to maybe not be uh, giving and, and paying it forward. You're not going to put yourself out there. If you're afraid of not getting money, you're going to have fear in, uh, into business. You're going to have that carefree, like, you know, I'm going to just, just do it, right? And then that's going to uh, affect your outcome. You're not going to get the results. So people wonder why we don't, we don't change, we don't change, we don't change. And if there's any area in your life where you're not getting um, the, the outcome that you want, we have to go all the way back and realize, what's my worldview connected to that outcome? What's my real world view? Um, this is where like things like NLP that I've been reading about, which is called Neuro Linguistic Programming, um, uh, even like chakra work, all that stuff, spirituality, um, just even, even philosophies and teachings taught in the Bible, like all point to this, like understanding where you truly are at the heart. So just be careful with the philosophies um, that are around us. You know, um, when it comes to money, we'll just use that as an example. That's a big one for everyone. Just think about it for a moment that it's like 95% of the money in the world is made by about 3% of the population. And depending on your worldview, you may come up with negative attitudes based on just that fact. But what if you shifted your worldview and realized, like, what is the, what is the philosophy of those 3%? I realize there's some bad people there, but there's good people there too. And that 3%, they have a different way of thinking. And just realize when it comes to money that, that it means that probably 97% of the people that you spend time with and you hang out with, 97% of the people you run into in the world don't possess yet the, uh, the right philosophy for wealth. It's something to think about. So if you want to change your outcome in, in terms of, of just that one thing in wealth, be willing to look in at your worldview and, and ask yourself, do I believe money is scarce? Do I believe that it's hard to get? Do I believe I have to sweat and labor and toil and always feel like I'm never getting enough? Is that Do I really believe that? And is there another way of thinking? There is. Uh, I'm definitely someone who's in the journey right now of exploring these things. I have my own negative worldviews and philosophies um, that uh, are limiting beliefs. 
And so my challenge to myself and to, to you as I share my journey is just to just ask those questions of yourself. Really dig in and find out who you are and what you, even if it's not what you believe, what is it that you want to believe? And uh, look for the books, the solutions out there that um, have it. Uh, that's what I wanted to share today. I hope it, uh, you find it inspiring. Um, and uh, until next time.